those hallways and those portraits have become central to the life of the school. It's oftentimes fun just in walking by to sort of see the way in which uh, people were photographed, and many of them are, are, are quite good at capturing the essence of the person. And I see students looking up the pictures of their professors, often laughing at what we looked like uh, many years ago. And I do think it provides a real sense of continuity about the place for, for everyone you're a part of a tradition, a tradition that's now about to be 200 years old. They're hung in chronological order so that as you move through the school, you get a glimpse of the school's history. The idea for the faculty wall goes back to the 1970s. It was around that time that um, the dean, Al Sachs, got together a committee on art which dealt with choosing the paintings and sculptures and the other artwork to display around campus. One of the members of the committee was Bernice Loss. Bernice was actually the wife of Professor Louis Loss. She herself was a painter and a sculptor and was named curator of the law school's art collection. She was quite instrumental in starting the wall. The idea was to create photos of faculty as they became tenured and then to create a gallery of those images. The first 33 photographs were installed in Pound Hall in 1977, the earliest being Austin Scott, who was tenured in 1914. They used to paint the faculty fairly regularly, and you can see a lot of those paintings in Langdell and around the campus. But as the school kept growing, it became kind of prohibitive to keep doing that. So the photographs allow the school to continue in that tradition. The, the visual history of the school exists on a continuum, starting from an oil painting to a black and white photograph to the digital print that exists today. So the school was founded in 1817. Fast forward, the first faculty portrait was acquired in 1848. It was a portrait of Simon Greenleaf. Um, we have almost 100 uh, paintings of Harvard Law School faculty in the collection, which is about a third of our legal portrait collection. About 60% were gifts, and a large number of the visuals collection, the art collection, came in during the deanship of Roscoe Pound. A little over 40% of our faculty paintings were acquired during his deanship. That to me is a significant number. Whether it's a painting or a photograph, to me it represents history and, and that's something that I love and that I hope other people can enjoy. High up on the wall in the Langdell reading room or eye level in the hallway of the WCC. The Wasserstein building has many wonderful features to it. The thing that it's done best is provided something that Harvard Law School never had before, which is a central meeting place on the campus. And I think it's led to a lot of informal interaction between students and faculties that, at least speaking personally, I really value. It's like a public square, only it's a long haul corridor on two floors, and it's lined with the people who have been lucky enough to have been entrusted with the stewardship of Harvard Law School. I don't know how well we've done at it, and the students will remind us when we haven't always done what we should, but uh, it is a potent symbol of the fact that this is an institution that in the last analysis is governed by a self-governing faculty who therefore has to be responsible for caring for it and its most important assets, which are not the faculty, but its students, for perpetuity. And that's to me what, the, what those portraits represent.